Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Maybe we just need to force a cycling deck again to win some games. Alright, never mind. Easy naturalists. Got a ramp into our Geruda. Um, not our naturalists. Seems good. Trine would also be decent. Can't play the sandworm. Naturalist is probably the best dewdrop we can have in this deck, besides just like good removal, I guess. Easy back for more. Nothing else that comes close or that we can cast. I guess the Lurking Dead Eye would be playable. Another Naturalist, sign me up. Although, Ponder's Enclave is pretty tempting too, with uh, Giruda in our deck. This one's close. Rock Slide could be good removal, but it requires us to go into another color. Might be Enclave. Now, I can't play the Sandworm to cycle and get back with the back for more, but there's some other cyclers with even mana costs. The uh, Death Touch Godzilla, for example, is uh, 8 mana, so that one we can play. Honey Mammoth would also be a good one. Coil Bug is okay. If we mill it, we get some value. The Wingfold Terron could also be a consideration if we want to splash blue. Survivor's Bond could be decent, so we've got the Naturalists that are humans, Giruda that's non-human. Otherwise, would probably be the Evolving Wilds, or maybe Anticipate if we want to dip into blue. Corpse Churn versus another Survivor's Bond. There's also Lava Serpent if I want to dip into red, which I can cycle, reanimate with the back for more. Maybe I should be taking uh, some expensive cyclers. Even if I can't cast it, I can still cycle it and reanimate or hit with Giruda. Because yeah, when we can't play the Sandworm, we'll need some other replacements. Probably go for Rock Slide over Corpse Churn now. And then I might splash the reds, go Junt again. Naturalist also helps with the uh, Serpent fixing, not so much with the Rock Slide. Take my fixing. Yeah, maybe I just take the Sandworm to disincentivize people from ending up in a black-green archetype that uh, plays well with the back for more we have. Don't think I'm playing two Survivor's Bonds. Facet Reader in blue also seems unlikely. I don't know, let's take a Sandworm. Take another one. There's still a chance I don't companion Geruda and then Sandworms are great to have with the back for more if we pick up more reanimation spells. Now I'll take the reader. But yeah, most likely we end up... I guess there's a chance we splash the black and just don't play the coil bug. But of course I'd still need to cast Geruda. So maybe it could be like blue-green splash red, splash black. But then we need some more fixing and then the enclave becomes a questionable inclusion. So most likely we're just Blank green splash reds. And then the sandworms are probably in the sideboard right now. Do have to watch out that we end up with enough playables. That's one of the issues with Giruda decks sometimes. But that's an easy blood curl. Octopus is also great, but of course can't play it. Symbiote don't have much mutate at the moment. Hopefully wield the honey mammoth. This pack doesn't have much for me. Startling development I can cycle, that eye, maybe. Sovereign on the splash is a little difficult to make work here. As good as that card is. I guess the naturalist can help with it a little bit. Don't hate the dead eye. 
Also synergizes well with the naturalists. Can deal one damage somewhere and then finish off the creature. Anything other than Lurker here. Prophecy would be on the splash. Jungle Hollow would be good. Don't mind the bootnipper. Honey Mammoth would be another nice one to wheel. Can't mutate on the naturalists. So we do need some other cheap non-humans like the coil bug to mutate onto. But then a 4-4 is still a pretty decent hit with Jeruda. Can't play the Shore Shark or the Cavern Whisperer. Trium would fix for two of our three colors. Or there's a Symbiote which would fit the requirement for the Lurker. So this one's close between Trium and Symbiote. I guess I'll go with the Symbiote. Nothing other than Coil Bug and Sleeper Dart. I guess I'll take a Coil Bug. Ooh. Mythos of Brocos. What can we do with that? I'm missing the blue, perhaps? It's actually not that great. If we cast it for 4 mana, it's kind of like an expensive survivor's bond, but we can get back two non-humans potentially. Or I can just take another rock slide, which is maybe better. Yeah, let's take rock slide. This is 7 mana, sadly, so we can't support it. Cliffs, Ceratops on the splash. Cliffs could maybe help with like casting a Terran if we get one later. Doesn't do a whole lot right now. Maybe I'll just take this for the collection. I don't think I have four yet. Otherwise a Terran could be a consideration if we wanted to splash uh, blue as a decent hit with Jeruda. Nothing here. Wilt, I guess, can cycle it. Uh, easy Honey Mammoth. I wouldn't mind the Corpse Churn to get back to Ruda if they answer it. Gonna have a hard time casting this on Curve. Development wouldn't be bad as like a 1 mana cycler, give us something to do with an odd amount of mana. Yeah. Don't think I'm splashing blue at this point, don't have the fixing for it. So could use some more six drops. Currently on only have Serpent and Mammoth that we can hit with Jeruda. So like a uh, Leech for instance would be fine. Probably take Mammoth over another Jungle Hollow. I wouldn't mind the fixing, but if we don't get more six drops in the last pack our deck could be a bit light on win conditions. And I've been pleasantly surprised by the Mammoth. Can't play any of these. So we need a couple more playables, but I think we'll get enough for a deck. <laughs> more ultimatums. Probably just gonna go with another naturalists. Rock slide would also be okay. Have two of them already. I think I just want to max out on these turn two naturalists. I'm a bit light on four mana creatures, so that's definitely a gap in our curve that we want to fill up. Interesting. Well, Keruga is a bit of a number with all these naturalists, and I can't play it with Jiruda as my companion. It's a bit difficult to pivot this late in the draft. But Leech seems fine. As another 6 drop. And then hopefully the Honey Mammoth wheels so we can play both of them. Ooh. 
Ooh, this is perfect. If I could cast it. Which I can't. Hmm, that's sad. I mean, Lurker is very good too, don't get me wrong. It's a 4-drop we can ramp into with the Naturalists. And uh, can get back Giruda later. But yeah, if we were main blue, then this would be spicy. <laughs> nice. Colossification. First time getting it passed in draft, I believe. Definitely a pretty powerful card if you can make it work. Good with a Glimmer Bell, if you've got enough mana. But Skull Prophets has to be the pick here. Symbiote's also consideration with the two Lurkers we have now. But we just want the ramp to get to Geruda as soon as possible. More Honey Mammoths. We're gonna have some awkward opening hands with this deck, I'm sure. But at least our Geruda hits are gonna be good. Does this do anything for me at this point? Probably not. Although, gaining one life could actually be worth it. Just uh, given that we only get to play even cards for the most part, we don't have many 1-mana cyclers, I can just throw this in the curve somewhere and then gain one life. Alternative would be like a sleeper dart. I'll take my one life. Probably want a wild. Didn't end up with a ton of fixing for these rock slides. Take my corpse churn. Over sleeper darts. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Ultimatum is still there. I guess I'll take the third rock slide then. Surprised to still see it here. And then this one's a little bit too off color for me to play. I guess blue was open. Should have enough playables here. This cycles for two. Would rather have the cheaper cycler here. Yeah, everything but white seemed open. Black maybe not so much. So how good is Survivor's Bond in this deck? I guess Deadeye is also human. And then mostly the Naturalists. But the main reason to play it is that we can get back our Giruda with it. Got one Curdle and three Rock Slides as a removal. And then Triple Mammoth, Serpent, and Leech as big uh, finishers. So deck's okay. I need to make one cut. Probably the Wilts. Don't need blue. I'll play the Backwater just for life. And then how many red sources do we need? Two Mountains, one Evolving Wilds, one Highlands. Gives me four red sources. For the rock slides, it's probably enough. And then, do need more green. Five, six, seven, at least eight. Leaves me with four, five, six, but then I also have the naturalist to help with Geruda. Seems okay. Could also play 18 lands, given that we have Enclave and kind of treat this as an extra spell. And then just got developments and play 18 lands. Kind of into that too. I guess I need to add one more card. Oh yeah, that was a 17th land I just added. So make that 18. Or maybe... Uh, this way we have 7, 8, 9 green, 5, 6, 7 black, and 4 reds. I 
I really want to mulligan hands without accelerants. Got four of them in the deck. No companion from our opponents. I'm gonna guess Mammoth is what I prefer. Uh oh. Good naturalist for days. I guess I would rather play Evolving Wilds than Symbiotes, so I can maybe play Geruda next turn. This Geruda hit's probably not going to be amazing, but let's find out. Alright, hit a rescuer, I'll take it. So that's going to get curdled. Then I can still play Symbiote over Naturalists. And then Leech is a great answer for Wolverine. Well, that does hit pretty hard, and they have this weaponize the monsters to burn us out, but Honey Mammoth has got her back. That also works. If they have Zenith Flare, how many cyclers? One, two, three. We'll attack first. Just cast this now. And get ourselves out of range. Sweet, turn for Geruda. Not the best hit, but uh, just casting our six drops is also a decent game plan. So pretty happy so far in both games that I mulliganed to try and hit one of our ramp creatures, because without a ramp our deck is kind of slow. I don't see any ramp. And there's our naturalists. No red soul, let go of one rock slide. I wouldn't mind drawing a land, so I don't want to thin out the deck yet, especially when we know the bottom card. Although maybe... Yeah, I guess I can cast rock slide in time anyway. So I don't think it matters that I don't get the red right away. Could have been correct to just play Coilbug, 
because I would rather have them kill Coilbug than Naturalist. Alright, plenty of answers for this giant. Hopefully it doesn't pick up Hexproof. And then uh, can get a red mana sorted. Ooh, first strike death touch. Those are two pretty good abilities to hit as well. But uh, we've got the answers. Pono keeps up three mana. So I might have to go for the end of turn blood curdle or upkeep, depending on the situation. In case they have a counter spell. If they tap out, I'll kill the giants. If they don't, I'll upkeep it. They did have Convolute up, but now they're tapped out and I'll get Resolve Giruda or still Rock Slide Giant if it doesn't pick up Hexproof. And it picked up Hexproof. Oh god. First Strike, Death Touch and Hexproof. My Leech doesn't even work. Alright, let's try it the hard way. Honey, I'm home. Flying, sure. Do we have any way in our deck to deal with it? Like, I gotta go wide enough to kill them in one attack, basically, but with all these tokens, I guess I can kill one with a leech. And that's before we take into account anything else they might have. Yeah, once it gets Vigilance and Lifelink, it's going to be very hard to race. If only they didn't hit Hexproof on that exact turn. They hit Vigilance. They hit everything in the perfect order, almost. Nice removal spell that doesn't do anything. So I gotta just start removing these 1-1s. One so maybe I'll go end of turn, leech one of the 1-1s. One and then try and force some attacks in. It's not indestructible, but first strike and death touch means it kills any of my creatures before they deal damage to it. Don't think I can attack right now. Let's say I kill one of the tokens, attack with all. Kill one of my 6-6s, six jump a 6-6. Six six. I get in it for 9 damage, but if I go end of turn leech, untap, rock slides, maybe I can attack. And they might be holding some counter spells too. We want to limit the amount of times our opponent gets to block one of my 6-6s six with the giant, basically. Because we're going to run out of 6-6s six before we kill them. If they have, like, nothing, I end of turn leech, kill another token with a rock slide, then I guess we could get there, but I doubt it. No lifelink, please. Plus one counter. Sure.
opponent's just keeping up counter spells at this point. They can win with their one card, basically. Eh, maybe not. We tried to kill it as soon as we could. We went for the Blood Curdle, they countered it. And then before we could rock slide it, gained Hexproof. Tried to kill it as soon as possible. Alright, that saves it. So is it go time? I think so. It's not getting any better. Maybe a Fire Prophecy on the Leech. Alright. So you're telling me there's a chance. No lifelink, please. It ran out of space. Menace. You can have menace. Just tap out for a creature that I can rock slide. Alright, opponent's digging. I want to kill the human exactly for this reason. Because if they don't have a human in play, this costs them three as opposed to one mana. And they already had a non-human to mutate onto. Alright, Corpse Churn, what do you do for me? Getting a Lurker back means I can attack with a 4-4. That way if they have removal here, they still die. Alright, I guess I can buy that. And if they kill this, they're still dead on board. Guess I'll go for Jeruda now over the second Lurker. Oof, we did it, chat. I don't know how, but we did it. Yeah, I mean, if they played more creatures out, then we probably lose that game. If they hit lifelink sooner, we lose that game. That was a close game. How do we feel about the no accelerant opening hand? We are on the draw. Double lurker can be pretty nice, but it might still be too slow. All right. So far we've hit on our second attempt each time. Probably ship the bonds, even though if they kill the naturalist, I could bond back serpent and naturalist, which is pretty good value. But gotta keep the lands, I think. It is close with this or forests. If we keep the land, then I might not have to cycle serpent and I can just hard cast it. Now that we drew the honey mammoth, I maybe can afford to cycle. We also still need to hit a second black source. There we go. Yeah, we have three naturalists and one uh, skull prophet, so we've got four two mana ramp creatures. And we're up against a cycling deck. So I guess I'll cycle the serpents.
Um, attacking could be bad if they have Swallow Hole plus a cheap creature. But also don't want to miss out on any damage. Opponent spinning their wheels. Setting up a giant Zenith Flare, I'm sure. Got six drops for days. They could have tapped Naturalist if they had another one mana cycler here on upkeep. Luckily they didn't. Do we want to Sweet or do we want to Serpent? Even mill the Zenith Flare? I mean, if we gain enough life, they can't kill me with the Zenith Flare, but I do get to attack right away. Let's go for Serpent. I can maybe back for more the Honey Mammoth later. And we also remove a Cycler for future Zenith Flares, so they're one less. Double pacifism, all right. It's pretty effective. Now I'm thinking we back for more our own serpents to hit for five. <laughs> More pacifisms. Alright, got a honey mammoth left, or I can lurker. Get back lurker. Although I can't mutate onto the naturalists. So I might be better off just playing the honey mammoth. I could, like, uh, mutate this onto the Honey Mammoth and then get back Lurker, mutate again and get back my entire graveyard. Although there's not much left there. That's also good. Nah, if they have a Cycler, they can stay alive here. But they don't. Not bad. Let's keep mulliganing into naturalists, shall we? No naturalists. So mulligan. The mana's good. Got two removal spells. This one's tempting. Yeah, I mean, if it works, it works. Do I just get rid of the Rumbling uh, Rock Slide, keep my two mana creatures for lands, get rid of one land since I have two mana creatures. Maybe I can afford to get rid of forests. This one blocks a little bit better. Put on stock on two. All right, could this be a turn for Giruda once again?
I'll take it. Slight disparity in power and toughness in play here. Wish I had more creatures with the uh, mill here, so that the lurkers could do more work. But I guess I can start milling with the prophets. That works. So, could mutate this, but there's only one target instead of two. Yeah, let's just attack. Could also just play a 4-4. Four, four. Could be enough. Or I could aim for the late game. Now let's play it cautiously in case they do somehow find a way to come back. Like a Clash of Titans, for instance, could take out two of my big creatures. That's one way they could recover. Opponent's just committing here. I mean, if I rock slide their token, they're taking 14. If I lurker mutate onto the lurker, I get back Honey Mammoth. I'm one mana short of also playing rock slide. I guess never mind, I can use profits. So let's do that. But then I can mill with the profit right now. Maybe I do just put them low so they have to s stay back. And then next turn I could maybe get some value if needed. Alright, they've got shum blockers for a while here. So want to be a little careful, because like a double striking Lord Drakis could potentially kill me. If I mutate the Lurker, I'm one mana short of casting the Honey Mammoth that I get back. If I attack with Prophet, Jiruda, Lurker, they're forced to triple block. And then I can Lurker on the Lurker, get back Honey Mammoth and the uh, Prophet that died. Like, it's possible if they have Raking Claws in hand that I'm forced to draw with Enclave, hoping to find an answer to the Drakus. But I guess a single Claws is not enough. They would need another spell besides it. And it's not like we have many answers that I could draw that I could still cast. So... Yeah, hopefully we don't get punked out by a Raking Claws. Ooh, maybe we want uh, Backwater actually for the life gain. Yeah, the one turn where we killed the token, I'm still not sure about it. But it did allow us to kind of force the opponents to stay back. And it forced them to jump every turn. But, uh, yeah, could have played it differently. But now they're at one, every single creature's lethal. And I'm about to gain four life, which should put me out of range. Uh, 
All right, I guess we're attacking with everyone. Does Raking Claws kill me next turn? It kills me for Xaxes. Could draw with Enclave, hoping to hit... What do we have left? One or two Rock Slides that could win me the game right now. If I miss on the Enclave draw, then let's see, three... I could still play Mammoth, but then I don't get to attack with the Naturalist, and then they buy themselves more time to chump with these 1-1s. One so I do think playing Mammoth is probably still the play, and hope they don't have Clash of Titans or Raking Claws. I mean, Clash we could potentially still beat. I guess a Glimmer Bell also survives here, since it blocks a Naturalist. Yeah, I guess Leech is not her out, but then I don't get to attack with a Naturalist, so then I wouldn't necessarily win the game here, but it would shrink down the Parcel Beasts. Alright, no Raking Claws, please. Sweet. Yeah, our opponent played well. Being aggressive with the flyer put them in a spot to potentially steal a win. Hmm. I've got a mana creature, but no black. Well, we've almost uh, mulliganed every single hand so far. Might as well keep mulliganing. Yep, yeah, that's a Naturalist's. I'll keep. If it ain't broke. Should I coil bug? I guess so. Maybe it soaks up a removal spell. Curdle can answer the reflection, whereas the rock slide cannot. Need to hit two lands here. But a land for a Curdle could also buy us enough time to stay alive here. Probably get a swamp so we have double blank in case the naturalist dies. One get to ramp out Geruda. And that's painful. We are playing 18 lands, so... Got a couple lands left to draw. Leech is a great answer for the fox, but we might not get to cast it in time. Yeah, I've got one turn to draw lands. That comes into play untapped. Otherwise we're dead. Probably keep up Curdle. They might not attack with a reflection, fearing a Curdle. I'm okay chumping the fox. And then rock sliding it next turn. Although it might get too big t for me to rock slide it. So maybe I do need to rock slide now and then curdle next turn.
And then if I'm not gonna block, I might as well attack. Any smaller haste creatures they could play. Can't think of many. Yeah, we're definitely within Zenith Flare range. Oh wow. Double reflection too. Alright, we're probably dead now. We needed to hit back-to-back -back lands to have a chance. Hopefully they go for like a raking clause on the reflection. Nope. For but a brief moment, the coil bug gain menace. Naturalist a bit late to the party. All right. I mean, we've got one hope here, and that opponent's out of cyclers. In which case, I guess playing Naturalist also makes sense, because it can just block the uh, Marmoset. But Zenith Flare takes us out. Opponents seem to have a pretty busted uh, cycling deck with lots of the good payoffs. Fox, Double Reflection, Zenith Flare, Marmoset, and no lack of cyclers. Not opening hand without an Accelerant. We're on the draw, so we're going to need that Accelerant even more. And there it is. Think we bottom the leech, and then Bond can get back Naturalist if they kill it. Alright, it's not a red white cycling deck. Next turn I can rock slide the Wolverine. Still need to hit a black source. I guess I would need to hit a black source anyway, so if I play a Highlands, then next turn the mountain doesn't cast Jeruda. Could cast Honey Mammoth, which is still decent. But of course, best case scenario, I just draw the swamp and I get to kill Wolverine right now. And any other land still cast me the mammoth. Alright, so we're scheduled to play Jeruda next turn. Sure. Take five. Hit their Tigerilla. Let's go with uh, Menace. Sadly, milled the back for more. If Jiruda dies, we can get it back with the Survivor's Bond, too.
should have uh, tapped a naturalist to keep up corpse churn with a swamp here. Although currently nothing I want to return with a corpse churn. And I guess having a 1-3 blocker is not irrelevant. Opponent down to three. Don't have to be scared here. Could corpse churn anyways, and worst case scenario, get back profits. If I get back lurker, probably just cast this as a 4 4. Because I can mutate onto the naturalists. Sure. I guess I need the black so the naturalist will be tapped. That's fine. All right, we got there. Sweet, so the secret with the Geruda deck, a mulligan until you have a naturalist in your opening hand, seem to work almost every time. And the two losses to red-white cycling, so not too surprising. Let's crack some packs. Mythos of Luna, very strong card. Although, would prefer to be all three colors. Although, out of all the Mythos cards, this is probably the one where if you don't have the two other colors, it's probably still the best card. Nethroi, pretty strong too. Definitely would be my first pick. Ruga. You can get punished by aggressive decks with a lack of early plays, but of course you can still cycle in the first couple turns and then uh, the value from Keruga is pretty hard to beat. So as long as you don't get overwhelmed by, by aggressive decks, Keruga will definitely win you the game. Kahira, pretty good too. Although I haven't had a Kahira Companion deck in draft yet, but I've seen some uh, deck lists that uh, seem pretty decent, so it's definitely possible. I'll take my Vivian, I guess. And Mythos of Vodrok, still pretty good without a blue and white mana. As a 4 mana, deal 5 damage, maybe take out a small death touch creature too. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.